So my first contact with the Tirana was when I was a young bloke. I reckon I was about oh, 14 or 15 years old. Uh, and it was in 1978. We were driving from our place in Gaimere along King George's Road at Beverly Hills, along the large hills there as you get heading up towards Beverly Hills from the southern side. And this amazing vehicle turned up and it was a Tirana, an SLR 5000 with flares and a drop tank and I thought to myself as a 15 year old, my god what is this? This looks like a racing car on the road and ever since then I've had a massive passion for Tiranas. <laughs> This is my LX1976 Tirana. It's an SLR 5000 that's been modified with A9X features. The Holden Tirana is a mid-sized car that was manufactured by Holden between 1967 to 1980. The name comes from an Aboriginal word meaning to fly. The LX was a cosmetic facelift to the LH and arrived in February 1976. Cosmetically, the most obvious changes were to replace the LH rectangular headlights with round headlights. Side window surrounds were changed from body colour to black and the front Holden badge was enlarged. A big change was the introduction of radial tuned suspension, which made a huge difference to the handling of the car. There were 65,977 LX Tiranas built, 947 5.0-litre V8s and only 405 A9Xs. The sedans were SLR 5000s and the hatches were SSs. 
My car was one of the 812 sedan 5 litre SLR 5000s built and there were 305 four door A9Xs built. These stats are from an excellent book called Tirana Tough by Norm Darwin. A great book and highly recommended. In 1977, the A9X option was introduced. The LX series also had the development of another limited built high performance option aimed at winning in the Australian touring car racing, and in particular at the annual Bathurst 1000 touring car race. This A9X option was available on the 5 litre V8 powered SLR 5000 sedan and SS hatchback models. The A9X visually resembled the L34 option LH model, but with the addition of a rear-facing bonnet scoop designed to increase airflow into the engine bay carburetor to produce maximum power in motor racing applications. The A9X package varied from the old L34 in road form in that whilst the engine was not modified, the A9X nevertheless had some special mechanical features such as rear disc brakes, heavy duty axles and a heavy duty 10 volt differential. And also it had the L31 motor and not the L34 motor. After being rushed into Group C touring car racing, Peter Brock gave the A9X a dream debut by winning the 1977 Hang 10 400 at Sandown. However, after he put his Tirana on a pole position, the A9X ultimately lost his debut Bathurst race in 1977 to the Ford Falcons of Alan Moffat and Colin Bond. The A9X package was soon refined and proved dominant during the following two seasons of touring car racing in Australia. Drivers Peter Brock, the legend, and Bob Morris were victorious in the 1978 and 1979 Australian Touring Car Championships, respectively, and A9Xs shared by Peter Brock and Jim Richards won the 1978 and 1979 Bathurst 1000s. The two Ford Falcons were leading the race at the start, but that didn't last too long. Here are some highlights of the 1978 Bathurst race, won by the Tiranas for you to enjoy. And Bob Morris standing on the gas as he comes down the inside. And Moffat tries to poke down on the inside of Colin Bond, but Morris has won the jump. Wait for the crowd reaction. Into the left hand and now back onto pit straight, the Ford side by side. Morris sideways, but he leads the first lap completed. And he's taken the first lap prize, but Bond at the inside of him. And Brock has now moved up on the inside. And we're running one, two, three, four. We got a race going here, folks. On the outside through the turn, and Morris has thwarted a bit there and watch on the side of the door and leads once again, but he's got four top rally. Sensational stuff, and I don't know how Morris controlled it. He was hit, put sideways, got it back under control, and this is desperate stuff with 160 to rock pulling out as he's uh, spearing down the straight. The radar trap showed the fastest car first time through it was Pete Gagan. The radar and Foley Alpha was also on the pitch, Patrick Lee, and we were there. Okay, here we have the race lead change with Peter Brock, Australian touring car champion, taking over the front running. Bob Morris is back in second, and tailgating is Alan Moffat in car number one. And this is the part of the course where the long legs of the Falcon will really show out. He'll sit in behind Peter Brock, draft, then jump out of the slipstream and try and race him down to the bottom corner. Well, here, here he comes. He goes. Wait for the arrival of Alan Moffat on the inside. You have to take him because Brock is going to be held up by the slower car on the right-hand side. You'll find that Brock has pulled over to the left behind Moffat. Whether he can leave his braking late enough, whether he's put forward to it, I don't think so. He'll be having to stay there, maybe close up a little bit on the brakes. So it's Alan Moffat who, for the first time, leads the race. Oh, Bobby Morris had a prank. He's been hit and he's gone into that. Is it Morris or Bell? It's one of the Ron Hodgson cars. It may be Derek Bell getting out. Looks like 27. This is the great race and this is the leader in car five, the lead car of the Marlborough Holden dealer team, Peter Brock. And uh, doing it well in front at the present time and has accumulated, we should mention uh, Evan in the lap leader prize money. Um, and other bonuses, nine and a half thousand dollars to this oh, point. Eight thousand two hundred and fifty in practice. He could retire now and still come away well and truly in front. All Peter Brock, and he has scooped the pool as far as the Ingersoll Rand money is concerned, taking all of their four thousand dollars. So he's doing exceptionally well. Alan 
Grace coming over the top of the mountain. Car has run superbly throughout the day. He had his problems here last year, but uh, he's heading for a second place finish in the Hardy Frodo 1000. He has a two lap lead over Murray Carter in third place and is trailing Peter Brock by one lap at the moment. Gary yeah, Wilkins. Oh, we've, we've lost a wheel. You can see their car 65, I think it has gone in there, which is uh, Rod Morris in the escort. He and Terry Finnegan. The wheel is missed by the others. The fans, fickle in some cases and uh, loyal in others, um, stand and salute. The man who's going to go on and win the Hardy Frodo 1000 over the top of the mountain. There'll be no slip ups here. Comes down through the top part of the section, acknowledging the cheers from the fans on the mountain. With a lap lead on the second place getter, the Craven Miles, a runner of uh, Alan Grice, and uh, three laps on the third place getter. Falcon of Murray Carter. Everything's in good shape through the final left hand and the open spaces of Conrad Strait. And Peter Brock is headed for victory. The chequered flag for the 1978 Hardy Ferrado 1000. Not worrying about terminal speed, how far he can get through the radar trap and what speed that he'll achieve in this last lap. This is as an important lap as the lap he cut in qualifying. Coming down to the final corner where everyone in pit lane is standing to salute a driver who deserves to win here today. John Harvey has dropped uh, back behind uh, Brock, so they're not shooting for a 1-2 camera photo finish, which it wouldn't be. The last corner comes up. The chequered flag unfolds for the 1978 champion, Peter Brock. Up to 163 Brock. laps, Peter Brock, winner of the great race. Peter Brock wins the 1978 Bathurst in his A9X hatchback to runner and becomes king of the mountain. A four-door A9X came forth. And here is the legendary 1979 Bathurst race in a show of the A9X's superiority. Brock and Richards won the 1979 race by a record six laps, with Brock setting the touring car lap record on the last lap of the race. Oh, Moffat has made a brilliant start. He's flying and Brock is going. And here they come to that critical first bend. We have a touch-off in the Hardy Ferrado Classic for 79 with Peter Brock, 0-5 for the Mulra Holden dealer team. Zooming up Mountain. The 400-kilometre Hank 10 at uh, Sandown Park. He has won five of those. He has also won the Repco Rally this year. An incredible performance from, from this very, very talented driver, Peter Brock. There he is at speed. Already the fans up on top of the mountain are cheering him on. Three and a half laps to go for Peter Brock as he heads on the way down to the dipper and then, of course, on to the straightaway once again. And it all seems so easy. As we've said so many times, the mark of a, a truly great driver, any driver who can make uh, racing look easy. And I suppose at home, uh, it just looks like a Sunday drive. Well, that's what it is to Peter Brock, but the immense concentration uh, needed to, to win a race, to lead every lap of the race. Um, and of course, John Shepard, who doesn't give too much away, looks like a very unemotional man. It's all a job to uh, John. Of spectators, the thousands upon thousands of them up the top part of the circuit who will be down near the fences. You'll be able to hear their cheers. As Peter Brock, 0-5 for the Marlborough Holden dealer team, comes across the mountain. The man who has conquered the mountain. Three times and staring a fourth in the face. Here he comes, listen to the applause, the accolades for a man among men when it comes to race car drivers, still tidy. Picks up the inside rear wheel that time, Peter Brock is trying and trying hard in this last lap. It'll be known as not only the race in which this car led every lap of the race, but it'll be interesting to check his final lap time. We have a timer on him, Conrad straight away. There you can see Bathurst in the background. Peter Brock wants to see one thing and one thing only, the chequered flag for his fourth Bathurst. Hardy Frodo, 1,000 win. And here he comes, down Breville, Conrad straight for the final time. No traffic to worry him, he's in good shape. It's been a long race, a race that this car has led every lap of. Down
down into the braking area, back through the gears. Listen to the crowd warming up. A checkered flag unfolds a page in history as Peter Rock this and the Marlboro Holden lap. dealer team comes across to take the checkered flag for the Peter Brock. And you'll probably find that his lap time will read somewhere in the 222, 221, 221 point something. He's done it. What a season for this incredibly talented driver, the man who only a month ago went round Australia in the uh, Repco reliability trial, led the 1-2-3 finish for Commodore. He's just picked up another Hardy Ferrato Classic. Another 1,000... Brock and Richards won made. the race by a record six laps, easily beating the old winning margin of two laps set in 1975, with Brock claiming the lap record of 2 minutes 21.1 seconds on the last lap of the 6.172 kilometre long circuit. This is where he became absolutely the king of the mountain. He got that moniker the year before, but this really cemented that, and that's why so many people, even to this day, just revere Peter Brock. Just an amazing driver, and of course, it was in the LX A9X Tirana. In fact, the top eight places went to Holden LX Tiranas. Peter Brock, Jim Richards in first place in an SS A9X. Peter Jensen, Larry Perkins in an SS A9X. And in third place, Ralph Radburn and John Smith in a Tirana SLR 5000 A9X four-door. Win Bathus on Sunday, sell on Monday. Ralph Radburn and John Smith came third in their four-door A9X, reuniting 40 years later. Holy moly! How good is that? Guys, that did this. I'm one of them. You're one of them. Yeah, and my mate's owned this car since '82. Chris, one of the greatest things that has happened to me in life, there's been others. Amazed. Amazed that people could bring it up to where it should be. There's no other word for it. It's just amazing. John Smith is a fantastic person. I've known him for so many years and it's just a delight to have him here. Good to see you. How are you? Oh, good, good. Hey. Right, as, just, as, 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 it as it was, as it was. Beautiful. Beautiful. There's been nothing changed. We've scared the red like I didn't even change the rock line in the corner. As it was, we just stripped it, washed it, yeah. put it back together. We had no major expectations, but um, just Talking to the boys and everything, we finished in the top 10, we would have been pretty happy. Um, but as it's turned out, the way things went, it, um, we just kept on working our way up through the field. And every time we looked around, another car went out, another one blew up, another one crashed. And we just kept counting them down as we went. In the meantime, our car was just so reliable. It went round and round and round. Three, two, one. Isn't that something? <laughs> so let me tell you about my Tirana. I purchased the car in 2010 from WA in Perth, shipped it over to Canberra, and I've been fixing her up ever since. The car is manufactured in October 1976 and is a genuine SLR 5000, which I've subsequently modified to have a whole bunch of A9X features. There are two reasons for this. One, an A9X is bloody expensive. And secondly, by doing this, you can really modify things which are above and beyond what was standard on an A9X. For example, the drop tank. Modifications include the flares, a drop tank. I love the chrome on the roof, so I've added that, which wasn't standard. 
a Toyota Super 5 speed gearbox, a HQ front assembly braking system, and Commodore rear disc braking system, a 9 inch four diff with Tirana suspension mounting brackets appropriately welded on. The axles are new billet type to suit and use the HQ Holden stud pattern. The axle tubes have been cut and refitted to give a wheel track 10 millimeters wider than a standard vehicle. She's got extractors and a two and a half inch exhaust system with stainless steel straight pipes out the back. Of course, you can see a whole bunch of modifications in the engine bay. A lot of chrome, you can tell I like my chrome, and you can see there's lots of modifications with a, a mild cam, roller rockers, etc. The engine has a Larry Perkins ACL Race Series engine kit. The V8 block has been reboard 60 thou. The crankshaft has been ground 20 thou. And the conrods have been sandblasted and honed. A Harrop manifold and a Holly carby. One of the other interesting features is that an SLR 5000 has the decals on the side of the car, whereas A9X only has it on the back. But you know what? I like the SLR 5000 on the side. Looks cool. Now let's go for a drive in my LX Tirana. Dam in Canberra. She's overflowing with all this rain. I'll finish off with a short film that I produced in 2011 with my good mate Simon Weaving. It included the Red Tirana and here's some snapshots from the short film. You can see the whole thing on IMDb. But there's John Wood and Justin Rosniak. We also had Reese Muldoon and Lawrence Leong in the film. Enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, I've been digging all day. Yeah, I've 
typewriter. I'm a fuel injected suicide machine. <laughs> Shouldn't he be here by now? He'll be here. Look at all those, you know. Are you mad? Well, he said he'd be here by eight. He'll be here. Just bloody relax. A team. He said to shoot you, take the money, and burn the car. He said that, Robbo. He said that. But it's a 76 Toronto. beginning with L, invented by Thomas Edison. I don't get it. If I'm supposed to shoot you, then you're supposed to shoot me. Who gets the money? Light bulb. What? Six across. Light bulb. Finished. He's not coming, is he? Which means he's killed Fat Boy. Yep. And the money's not in the boot, is it? <laughs> 